In this Primitive Tools episode, I'm going to show you how to make a Paleolithic Primitive Spear Point. I'm going to take a piece of flint that we collected from the river and nap a spear point out of it. Now, hopefully I'll get a good piece out of this. So both look okay. This one will be this one will be easier. So I'll try this one first. Now for it to be a working spear point, it doesn't have to be much bigger than that. So when I'm doing this, I'm abrading the edges. I'm dulling the edges to make it so that when I hit on these spots that are lower, when I hit on them, it travels along this line and creates a big flake. Same thing, you would hit there and you would hit there. And you just keep doing that over and over again to thin it down. So here is a platform and here is a platform. Those are places you want to hit. It'll follow this line. The flake will thin it down along these lines. You can see right here, the shallow area is where one of the flakes came off. Same thing with here. And you just keep doing that over and over again until it gets down to the shape and size you want. So the platform there and the platform there. The lowest points on the rock. So I'm not going for anything too fancy because this is for use. It's starting to rain out. Kind of got to hurry now. There's some damage in here, so I gotta be careful. But it's already taken shape, I don't need much more. Hopefully it stays together. So it's starting to rain, but I'm getting pretty close here. I just gotta thin it down, shape this edge up a little more, and the spear point will be done. No way. Okay, I think we're good. So we got a break in the weather here. The sun came back out. And uh, we got along that far. You could see on this, this is the bottom of the rock. When I split it in half, you could see how much we've taken off. And the crystals on this line up to the crystals on that. So you could keep track of where your rock was when you're working on it. It's just a cool little thing. So we took off that much of the rock so far. And we gotta thin it more. So I'm gonna grind down again. I've ground all the edges so that I could see what I'm doing here. And where I where I should hit is the low platforms. So there and there and there. And when you flip it over, here's a low spot, here's a low kind of low spot, here's a low spot, low spot. But uh, one of the things I see on this piece is this is not such pure chert up here. And it's more brittle. So we might have a problem right along this edge here. We'll see what we could do. I'm going to use um, indirect percussion for that. So I'm going to use the indirect method, which is the issue stick under the leg hit with antler. And that allows more power to be driven into the flakes to push them off rather than trying to sit there with your wrist or with your shoulder and pushing the flake off with brute strength, you're instead just like that. We might have some problem with this, 
And if we do have a problem with this, then it'll just be a smaller spear point that'll still get the job done. Doesn't need to be huge like this. It could be thin or it could be short. It doesn't matter as long as it pierces and cuts. So I'm pushing the point into the copper tip. And as I press in, I hit with this to get the flake off. You do that all the way down the piece to thin it. So I hit right there. And you just do that along the whole piece. Here, there's a lot of problem areas. And I'm not sure, I'm not certain that it's not going to break. It has uh, crystals in it. These lines of crystals make a weak spot. Now, if I can't get rid of those and thin it, you see how thick it is here. I have to thin that. And I have to thin here. But there's a line of crystals in there that's going to stop the flake from traveling. And if it stops it, it could direct force down through the point instead of a cross and over it and if it goes down and through it'll snap so when you have damage like this there's no way to determine for sure if you're going to break it or not doing this if you're dealing with a lot of damaged rock which from creek rock would definitely a lot of it be damaged you got to learn how to work around these problem areas and sometimes they fail that just happens but that's part of that's part of the process and that's part of learning and you learn how to correct these problems over time. Every time I fix it, I learn something new. Every time I break it, I learn something new. So we're gonna see what happens here. Now this piece does have some problem areas in it, but we could probably fix it up. So this one cleaned up a lot. It went almost across the whole thing. And look how much width that took off. So when you pull it off, it's way thinner. What I'm going to do with this point, since there's a lot of damage in here, I think I'm going to go with the zigzag method. So I'll take a flake off that way, then I'll flip it over, take a flake off that way, flip it over again, flake that way, all the way up to the tip. Then I'll regrind the whole thing and see if I could fix these problem spots. Also, on this side here, I gave way more width to work with just in case this side fails i'll still be able to get a point out of this like that even if i lose that much i still have a very deadly spear point a lot of that crystal is still in there so we're just going to keep thinning this now. We're past the problem point. Point. This is going to be a little bit of a problem here. But I'll just get rid of that with grinding, I think. So now you can see here, it's a really funky setup. This is going to be a big problem. I'll see what I could do. I think I'm going to start at the tip. I don't want to hit too hard. Okay. Now, what I'm doing with the zigzagging is it's setting up new places that I could hit. So now I have access to this platform, which runs on that line but it's still all funky in here. So what I'm gonna do is take another flake below that platform on the opposite side. There. So we're getting really close to the finish here. I managed to fix that whole tip. Here is still a little thick, but I like to keep that area thick because it adds strength to the entire point. If the tip breaks off, I could pull it out, set it back in, and resharpen it. Thunder. But we fixed that whole tip. 
we got rid of all that funky stuff. There's a little bit in here that I'm not going to mess with. It runs up to here, but we don't need to, we don't need to fix that to, um, make it a usable point. And I think what I'm going to do is just try to thin it a little bit right here and then put some notches in, sharpen it up and we're good to go. We're getting there. So I've just been zigzagging back and forth and taking the flakes off and thinning it down a little bit. And, um, I'm getting to the base now, and I'm going to do something called that. It's called a channel flake or a fluting flake up the point. But uh, if you want to see that, uh, go over to my Patreon and check out what I have available there, because that will be exclusive content just for Patreon. So on my Patreon, I'm going to be doing all of my secrets and tips and um, everything I've learned within the past 14, maybe even 15 years now of doing this along with what I've learned in archaeology, I want to be able to help you guys, and if you guys want to be able to help me, you could sign up through Patreon, and I'll gladly teach you this stuff. I have a mentorship program on there, and I have other tiers as well that you could look at, and go and check that out. I'll put the link. It'll be in the description of the video. You could just click on the link and go and check it out. So now for the final shaping and sharpening, uh, usually I use a caribou antler stuck in a stick with some pine sap pine pitch glue but this has been ground down to a nub so on the other side I have a little stick of copper and I'm just going to use that to finish it up and same thing I'm just going to zigzag across the piece and push little tiny flakes off you don't want to take too much off here so this is what I do for final resharpening it's just pushing those little flakes off And right there, you can see I'm taking off that brown stuff. And that brown stuff is called the cortex of the rock. And the cortex is actually weak. So you want to get that off if you can. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just zigzagging back and forth on these platforms here. And making sure it keeps the right shape so now that tip is pretty pretty sharp i'm going to make it go to more of a point and a lot of this uh you could see the cortex is a different color than the chert and there's a lot of cortex in there it goes right across the line here you can see it on this side this brown stuff and like i said that's weaker so um i'm gonna leave this because Otherwise, it'll shorten my spear point, and I don't want a short one. Just grind the piece again. So I'm just cleaning up the base a little bit. And this is a pretty good uh, fluid point. So this is an accurate um, replica of a Paleo-Indian spear point. Would have been used about 13,000 years ago, 12,000 years ago. And uh, these were used to hunt large game like a caribou. And they would put it on a atlatl dart and throw it with a spear thrower. The spear thrower was called an atlatl. And these darts would travel very, very forcefully into the animal. And then they had their food and clothes. So um, you could do all of this with just antler. You don't need the copper. You could do it with antler. It just takes a little bit more pressure to get those flakes off. As for the damage, we cleared up a lot of it. I flaked right over it and I left the part that was very crystally in here. Like that. So all of this is crystally, but that's fine because it'll be sitting in the stick here. And this is the spot that we'll be thrusting or throwing. So we took this half of a spall of creek cobble and turned it into a Paleo-Indian fluted point replica. 
And you can see how much we thinned that down compared to what it originally was. We thinned it down to a usable spear point that's razor sharp. <clears throat> we, um, we used indirect. We used pressure flaking, hand pressure flaking. And we used, uh, it's called percussion flaking, which is when I was hitting with the copper. You could uh, alternate those methods as you learn, and you'll see which works best for you. I like to use all of them. We finished the spear point in relatively short time, so now we're going to go put it on a stick. So if you want to see how I make a spear out of this, a primitive thrusting spear, uh, check out that other video that I have coming. So thanks so much for hanging out and watching this, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And when you do that, hit the bell icon. You'll be able to see more primitive build videos. Check out my playlist. I have many other primitive builds in the past and more incoming. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. See you guys soon.